Hello, and welcome to week number three of the Artist Way Study Group. I am Kat Fitzpatrick, and those of you who are watching probably already know who I am, but I hope there's some new participants as well. I do this class on a video Zoom call and also in person at a local library. The idea of this class is to facilitate a greater understanding of our own relationship to our own creative life. The book, The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron is our guide right now. This book has so many tips and tools and tricks and ideas for expanding your creative life. I am facilitating the study group. I am also like a participant. I am not teaching the text. It's not my text. I'm facilitating the process for myself and for everyone who's interested in engaging in this fascinating question of how do we become creative people in this world? It has so many pressures. Time seems to be going so fast. There's too much to do and not enough time to do it. Well, if you don't have enough to do al already, the text will give you plenty more. And one of the questions people have had is it's it feels overwhelming how much there is to do to uh, use the artist's way, everything she offers. Well, I say, and I did a little video that's um, on Instagram and YouTube, challenge by choice. I've been out involved in outdoor education for some years and we used to do high ropes and we would allow participants to do challenge by choice. You're going to climb up that tree trunk and go onto the high wire, but you get to choose, really, do you want to go all the way up the tree trunk across the high wire? How far, how fast, and how long are you going to keep at it? When we take it upon ourselves to make our own choices, then that is actually the real magic in life when you feel like you have the choice in your life. So that's going to apply to creativity also, and not just to, um, you're not going to check a whole bunch of boxes. You're not going to please Julia Cameron so much that suddenly you feel great about your creative life. It's just something that each of us has to contend with ourselves. That being said, if you push yourself a little bit or can schedule time to read the book, to look at the tasks, to do the morning pages, even though I haven't always done morning pages, I've journaled for years and years and years. So I really recommend always having a notebook, at least even if you're not writing in it, know where it is. Keep it in a spot, keep a pen with it, and those pages are going to be there for you. Now, if you do the morning pages, meaning day after day at a specific time, you meet yourself on the page, you will invariably find things opening up. I'm going to read to you what I wrote this morning. You know what? I wrote it and I thought, oh, this would be great to share. And I have no idea. It was like a dream. I don't know what it says. So I am going to share it with you. And fingers crossed, it will be something worth listening to. So 9-23-24, desk. A chip, I can hear a chippy outside, a chipmunk. It was around 6.15. Why does nothing ever stick? I pose this question to myself. Or does it? Yesterday in the master class with Oliver Berkman, author of Mindfulness for Mortals, he has a line about trusting that what resonates will return. So even if I don't take the time um. And this is a thing that everybody who <laughs> reads from their own journal, and I love hearing the words, we're often like, wait, what is that word? Even if I don't take the time right now to review my recent and distant yesterdays, I can trust that what truly matters to my heart will come back to my conscious mind. There, it's a very interesting question or statement. How interesting, some of my friends used to say, how interesting in there. I'm just really humoring you voices. But I mean it in a really like, ooh, how fascinating. Is that true? This idea of trusting the flow of our life and our own inner being to bring to mind what is most needed when it is most needed. Why? It makes me want to weep for joy. I mean, can I really just get rid of my good person, my good person report card? 
my binders of meticulously taking notes on how to get it right or else. Not that life doesn't and won't take some effort and reflections, some trial and error. Oh, I wrote a, a beep load of error. I actually wrote the word S-H-I-T and then put beep underneath it. Well, it seems to be the MO of this earthly life. I mean, I some recall seeing, remember, um, the author Sue Grafton speak at some god awful write, writers conference in which she said, and I'm just kidding, I just don't really like conferences, um, but <laughs> in which she said, not verbatim, everyone's life is a, re a mess. Read more biographies of accomplished or famous people and you'll see. Don't worry about the mess in your life. Just get on with things. Wow. So yeah, a beep load of error. But that's the idea as Tara Brock, who um, also an author who writes on Buddhist and meditation, Buddhist ideas and meditation. She puts it that we can trust in our own goodness. Again, verge of tears. I, I, want, I won't elaborate here anyway on what or where or why or how the idea that I was born a deficit into the world came about. So let me state that again because I rushed over it. I won't elaborate here on when, where, or how the idea that I was born as a deficit into the world came into it about. And that I have to spend my every waking hour to justify my existence. But I can truly crow, mostly inwardly, that there might be a glimmer of light at the end of that tunnel. What resonates will return naturally. As I trust in my as I trust in my own goodness, gasp, truly gasp, my own goodness, I can relax and go let go of that good person report card. Yes, even for the venerable artist way checklist of things to do. I'm doing the morning pages now. I will care for my inner artist with a neat outing or date. I have some of the challenging tasks on my list of to-dos, as well as some um, some ones that I'm sensing I'm trying to avoid. It's still tricky for me to list my own um, my own champions and spend time with kudos as if I'll jinx them or or else um, or or somehow by looking directly into their eyes they'll disappear. And I know that a meditative walk in the woods will do me some good today. By the way, the meditative walk isn't really listed anywhere. It was she said something last July that it's a good thing to take up. Um, doing a meditative walk on a regular basis, maybe a couple times a week, 20 minutes, no phone, no distractions. Um, it's listed in chapter one, but it's then that's the only time she lists it. But uh, she, as she's been speaking in the past, recent past, she's talked about it being more and more important or, or one of the, the uh, beneficial options. So all these things done in my own clumsy form in one way or another over many years. Um, I'll keep at it. Using the artist word format is injecting some form, friction, form and friction into areas it's good to look at and to analyze. But and as I um, as I facilitate this class study group session, I want so deeply that others do not find themselves feeling as if they are in the bad um, the bad bad situation of freaking out. Creativity is not a product. And yet, even in our relationship to the creative art, and yet even our relationship to the creative arts can be turned into an industrial size production. Industrial, sorry, it's late. Industrial style production line by the tenants of our societies. Produce, produce, produce mass consciousness. Do, 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 and hit the quota or else. What can I do to help quell that terror? I guess only this, explore it as deeply as I can here on the page and in those moments in the day where I remember to breathe a little more easily, to drop my shoulders, to unclench my jaw, to soften into life's humor and resiliency. What resonates will return. The inherent goodness of my nature will do its thing in the world. And I will be, and what light there is will shine through, allowing the most creative thing of all being our presence here together across this video, which is really kind of neat. 
and um, what resonates will return. I just did another little essay with class tonight. I'm not going to read it because it just kind of, it's a little more rote, but I will go over the last part, which I wrote, and I'm hoping that uh, my friend Richard Connor, he will be, will take a peek at this because he inspired this part. Um, that there is a paragraph on page 75 that begins with the scientifically minded among you. So she's talking about looking at things from a scientific point of view. And this friend of mine who's attended many of my classes felt like he couldn't be in, in this class because he was more scientifically minded. Um, this one paragraph doesn't isn't like an umbrella that's going to make all of artists way into a scientific treatise. But I've long been really against this idea that art and science are somehow polarized. There's just no way that's possible because there's an art and science to all things. Even our artist work can have, you can have an objective point of view to it. And even in science, I think, I can't quote anything right away, but I've read a lot about scientific scientists. And as they're working, they're also using their intuition and they're creating something where it, it, they're creating an experiment, creating a space for us to have this relationship with the world that is building on observations. So I think there's something very artistic about the scientific process and something very um, that art, art activities can benefit from using a scientific model. So what I wrote was, it may be, beca be because of what Richard Connery said about being a scientist and not relating to the artist's way. Perhaps that's why scientifically popped out at this time. But I've for long felt that the separation of art and science is an artificial, sorry for the repeat, but... Um, I forgot that I had it in there. Julia Cameron goes on to say that the scientifically inclined might want to make good, thorough list of the clothes you wish you had. Very often the items come into your possession at a disconcerting speed. Just try it. Experiment. What a great idea. Experiment. I think this could and should apply to all aspects of building a creative life. I actually texted Richard about this. Perhaps it would be wise to have a worksheet for us from the the different aspects of using our creative lives that would be using um, using all the elements of a scientific experiment. For instance, a hypothesis. I think if I do morning pages, I will feel more intuitive. Observation, you know, or like what is your desired outcome? What's your anticipated outcome? Observations and conclusion after a week, I don't feel anything. And maybe do it again. And after two weeks, Oh my goodness, I had this amazing insight just popped up in the middle of my dreams. A lot of people in class tonight said that they've been dreaming more since they started doing morning pages or that they woke up with an inspiration, made a phone call, took action, and their life changed in an instant. So taking a scientific approach that is cataloging hypothesis, expectations, observations, and making a conclusion, I think it's a it's just an obvious thing to do. Now, this is kind of becoming another task. So we'll see how it fits into my life and yours, but you could take it and run with it. Or if I create such a form, I will share it with you. Um, so I also texted with Richard about this. It was very interesting because he texted back, are you looking for an anticipated outcome or a desired outcome? Two very different things, but both of them seem valuable to me. So another thing to experiment in this form, would you want to say desired or anticipated? What a good question. A very good nuance I wrote back. In all these things we do, we hope, we hope that something will happen. We are making something happen. We desire, we anticipate, we experiment. So thank you for spending this time with me. I didn't really go into what's actually in chapter three and chapter four, and next week's reading will be five and six. Um, that's for you to do. Go into the text the way that you feel best doing it, how you feel reading it. 
Remember, this is about building a lifelong relationship with creativity. <clears throat> As one participant put it, a happy rhythm of writing time. For her, that's what she's looking for, a happy rhythm. We only have so much time in the world. Let's enjoy what we have. Whatever task or aspect or pages or artist date you take up, do it with your whole heart and soul. And I'm talking to myself too, because I often find myself distracted by other things I need to be doing, but I'm working with this time to give myself the gift of really enjoying and taking hold of the creative life I want to enjoy from now on. And it doesn't come with a report card. It goes moment by moment. Also, I just have to add in there, one participant went on an artist date. It was only 15 minutes. She went on a swing set, which is stunning because she's 65 years old, but her inner artist child wanted to do it. And then she walked across and she talked about looking at a tree and how fascinating it was. And it wasn't until I realized that she lives in Arizona. So seeing this tree in a park was completely something like out of this world because she lives in a desert and then sitting under the tree and looking up and seeing an owl. Now that could be coincidence, but the fact that she put out there that she wanted to nurture her inner self and then saw this, went swinging, saw this gorgeous, ginormous plant that she's not used to seeing and in it sees one of the most divine creatures on the earth, an owl, which is, um, symbolizes wisdom and uh, is actually, a, I have a picture of Athena with her owl on the, her arm. It was a 15 minute artist date. Again, a little life changing, creative action that was just so easy to grasp and so monumental to embrace. All right, go forth, enjoy what you can of the artist's way, enjoy your own creative um, endeavors, and please like, comment, share, let us know what, what you've done, what's felt good. Put it into writing for yourself and capture it. I'm Kat Fitzpatrick, freelance teacher, writer, and outdoor educator. Until next time, please take care.